Hello, I am Aaron Kanapik. Today, we will be exploring Edpuzzle specifically for student accountability, differentiation, and feedback. It is an application that can be used to share videos with students and track their learning progress. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking our logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right corner. Here's how to get started with Edpuzzle for student accountability, differentiation, and feedback. As you can see, we're on the home screen here of Edpuzzle. I hope you've had a chance to check out our getting started video so you know how to upload and create videos and add questions to improve student learning. Here in our home screen, I'm going to click on my content and we're going to select a random video so that we can get started and showing you how to increase student accountability. If I were to come down here and click on this video that I know does not have any questions yet and go to assign this video, you will see here an option that says prevent skipping. This info box says if checked, students won't be able to skip ahead. This is a great feature to make sure that students are accountable for watching the entire Edpuzzle video assigned to them. Further, Edpuzzle gives us this gradebook feature so that we can track all of our student learning and see exactly who is doing what and how much time students are spending in their videos and how much they are mastering their learning. Furthermore, we can click on individual videos and see exactly how our class progress is going and furthermore, how individual students are progressing on a given video. This right here is a powerful sc uh, screen that not only shows us the total time spent by this student on the video, but it says here number of times the student watched each section of your video. This is very important, especially when you see students that are or may have been struggling with certain questions. We see that this student rewatched this segment three times, but sadly still missed this question in their video. These four ways, though, are going to drastically improve student accountability by preventing skipping, keeping up with your gradebook, looking at the class progress, and especially looking at the individual student progress of your videos. Let's back up though to this class progress screen and talk about differentiation. As you can see here, Edpuzzle automatically will break down your class progress. And if you were a teacher uh, looking to incorporate blended learning and small groups into your classroom, this is a very powerful feature of Edpuzzle. You can see here that you have your red band of students that did not perform so well, your yellow band, as well as your green band of higher performing students. If we go back up here to our red group, we can see exactly who would need to be pulled for small group instruction, or you can see here your yellow group as well, and you might wanna divide your class in two to more effectively target um, their learning needs and to provide more um, effective feedback and instruction on their areas of weakness. This can be very powerful, and me, myself, in my own classroom, like to use Edpuzzle at the start of class, and I can see exactly who might struggle with the content that day, so I know exactly who I'm going to pull from my small group, or who I will at least visit um, to check up on, knowing they might struggle with the content for that day. Next, I want us to look at student feedback in the ways that we can more effectively engage with students as they use Edpuzzle in our classrooms. When you're making a video, and we click this edit option here, you have the option to either incorporate multiple choice questions or open-ended questions or even notes in your videos. But let's click multiple choice and see how Edpuzzle allows teachers to provide feedback for a right answer as well as any of the wrong answers for your question. So you can click this feedback option here and type in anything to clarify the information that the student just previously watched in the Edpuzzle video. You can even link to an external website or even link 
to another Edpuzzle video. If we go up here to open-ended question, you can see the same feature, but also with the open-ended question, students will have a chance to respond, uh, have a written response to a question that you pose to them, and you can engage in meaningful, meaningful dialogue with your students. Open-ended questions um, are great to know exactly uh, what students are thinking and to know how their learning is progressing. Now, when you finish a video, you will see that when you go to assign your video, you have the option to get public links. You can copy this Edpuzzle link to your video or get the embed code and put this link um, into other applications like Google Classroom, specifically the Ask feature if you want to start a class discussion. Sadly, Edpuzzle does not have a way for students to engage with one another in this application, but you can do a little bit of app smashing and use this Edpuzzle link in Google Classroom or even Verso Learning. Verso is a similar uh, discussion format to Google Classroom, but it allows for anonymous student interactions. So with increasing student accountability, differentiation and feedback, I hope you um, have found useful ways to go above and beyond with Edpuzzle. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos or share the playlist below. Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out uh, our other resources and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow Dear Disses on social media or contact us via email or on our blog. Thanks for watching.